All right, so here we have all the components. Uh, the rifle's already obviously been broken down completely. Um, with the exception of these sights, I'll have to push these out too. Um, but, uh, you know, just basic Winchester, uh, 1892. Uh, it's been uh, well you well worn, well loved. It's been shot so much over the years, it's uh, kind of lost its accuracy. The components, what we're working with here, obviously, is it's going to be your uh, the receiver part. And, um, you know, the bolt and all the other parts are in the other room. Um, don't really need to show those at this time. Uh, we will show reassembly and uh, having a little bit of fun with it, testing it out <clears throat> when it's completed. Uh, but you got the uh, original barrel. Uh, all this stuff's in pretty good shape. So original stamping, all that good stuff. Um, I was talking with a customer, you know, I offered him a refinish or a restoration job on this and he wants to keep it original and that's, that's understandable. Um, it's not really a value concern. He just, you know, he likes, he likes it looking. He's had this since he was a, a boy, I guess. So, and this was grandma's gun too. So it's, it's been in the family for a long time. And I, I completely understand that, <clears throat> you know, other than the fact that we're going to be boring this or drilling this out and putting a new liner in. I mean, that's going to kind of kill the value of it too, but you know what? Who cares? He does not, so that's fine. Moving right along, here is our liner. So this is the, the brand new liner. Um, again, I will get a bore scope out and uh, we'll get some footage of the the existing bore and then we'll go down this bore. Uh, this is traditional 2520 Winchester. I didn't already mention that. So we've got our chambering reamer. So we'll re have to recut that chamber, uh, fresh chamber, and then some uh, go and no-go gauges for that. Uh, the drill itself, a uh, big old monster drill here. Um, that's going to uh, basically, idea with this is you'll drill about halfway through, maybe a little more. Flip the barrel around, drill the rest of the way through, which leaves uh, accommodates for your new liner. The liner will be installed. Uh, there's a couple different ways to do it. Um, most difficult way, <clears throat> maybe the best, but the most difficult would be soldering it. Um, I'm not afraid of soldering anything, but soldering something this long and large, I really don't have anything to preheat with. I mean, to do the job proper, you would want to bring this whole barrel up to temperature evenly um, in a kiln or something like that. Um, get it up to maybe 400 degrees, 500 degrees, something like that. <clears throat> and then tin it with solder, uh, either, either the inside of here or the outside of here. And so then you're going to install it, hoping that everything stays melted <clears throat> and sets properly. Um, what generally happens is you're going to be pushing out pretty much the majority of everything by the time, uh, you get this pushed through to the end. Um, solder, you know, is very thin. So, um, just like a copper pipe or something in a plumbing situation, it would it would certainly work and it would seal it up real well. Uh, again, the problem is I just have no way of uh, preheating this, these components, these big long components evenly. So second best option is gonna be some kind of epoxy, <clears throat> um, something like JB Weld, something like uh, Acroglass, something like that. Uh, comes a little warning here, you know, this. Liner is for 2520 Winchester center fire. You know, don't shoot anything else out of it, obviously. Just kind of a <clears throat> uh, liability thing that they have to put in there. Um, I was able to source this liner for Brownells. And then one note on this liner, you'll notice there's a groove here. Oops. Yeah, right, huh? Um, as far as I understand it, <clears throat> this is how they hold it. Uh, however, they rifle this, but this is what, where they're holding this thing. They rep it this way, which means the bullet will be traveling down the bore um, in the same direction as the uh, any burrs or anything like that may still be left in there. Uh, so basically, this is going to be a breech end. This will be uh, in the breech right there. 
This will be the muzzle end. And so as you can see, we'll be sticking out a half inch or so uh, on each end. So once that's um, drilled out, this is installed with the uh, epoxy. We'll have it sticking out like that, and then we'll come back in, remachine the, down to the breech flat. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, we may or may not have to recut this extractor groove. Um, and then, like I said, we'll be rechambering it with the uh, chambering ringer. Um, and 2520 being a rim cartridge, you know, that's where your headspace is stopping. So fairly straightforward job, really nothing to it. Um, the barrel came off surprisingly easy. It wasn't loose or nothing, but it does help to have flats on this. So, you know, I just grabbed it in a big old vise, uh, padded vise, and then I got a wrench for the action. And uh, it, it cracked loose, actually surprisingly easy. Um, so it shouldn't be much to uh, get this back to where it needs to be. Lined up on the top like that. Once all that's good, uh, should be off to the races for a whole new uh, lease on life with this uh, rifle. Uh, but we'll have a little fun with it. The customer left me a whole bunch of test fire rounds. So uh, we'll go out and shoot some steel with it. And like I said, just have some fun. I don't have much footage of me actually shooting guns, so that'll that'll prove to you that I do shoot. I don't just build them. Dang it. <laughs> you know, it's nice to be that so busy that I can't shoot, but still got to have some fun sometimes, right? <clears throat> so, uh, right on. That being said, that's uh, that's uh, pretty much everything. So, uh, so yeah, next step will be uh, prepping the barrel and drilling out the bore. So, uh, we'll be back with that. Okay, just gonna take a peek in this bore. Get my bore scope video recorder started. All right, let's see what we got here. Started up in there. Chamber's not terribly bad. Oh my god! Oh my god! What in the world? Look at this. This is the bore of this barrel. Right now, like this is live. Okay, there's actually, I just saw some rifling. There's a very small remnant of rifling. Look at this. This is like a lunar landscape. This is like a different planet. Maybe the bottom of the ocean. You know, I expected this to be bad, but oh, wow. There's some rifling, maybe. Oh, there it's gone. Oh my God. There's some rifling, maybe. <laughs> There's some rifling. Kinda. Okay, there, that looks like half normal barrel right there. Jeez, man, all right, there's the end of it. All right, I feel like <clears throat> you're not gonna believe me unless I, let me change this camera around. Okay, I just wanted to reposition the camera so you can actually see me doing this. Um, because, wow, this is, this is, this is for real. Okay, so my <clears throat> borescope camera is still rolling. I'm sure you can't see this on the, see the screen, but at least kind of shows it. Okay, so let's uh, rotate at 90 degrees as we would. This is unbelievable. I have never seen a bore this bad. Let 
I love this stuff. Like looking at it at a 45 degree angle is one thing, but like, geez, what happened to this thing? It's like it sat on the bottom of a river for about 10 years. A salty river at that. That is just incredible. Again, here's the chamber. You know, you're like, oh, this is pretty old, but... There's no throat. There's no neck. It's just like, smooth wall chamber, and then... Blah. This is amazing. Holy cow. Amazing. So it gets a little better as you get towards the muzzle. Like that, that's at least a reminiscent of a rifled barrel. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Look at that. Would you look at that? Okay, I think I've seen enough. Wow. Well, um, no wonder my customer couldn't hit the broad side of a barn with this thing. That is just amazing. Like I said, I've seen a lot, a lot of rifle barrels or shot out barrels and things like that. And normally you'll see it here in the throat area and the rest of the bore is okay, but... Wow. So yeah, it's high time for a relining of this barrel. So I guess while we're at it, let's check out the liner. I mean, it essentially is a new barrel. <clears throat> okay, so let's see here. Yeah, that looks good. Wow. For a button rifled barrel, that's freaking nice. I need, I can't say for sure. These might not even be button rifled. Okay. <clears throat> so that looks very nice. And I, I never even ran a patch through this either. So there's probably yep, like that kind of stuff. That's just dust and crap from sitting in a warehouse. Jeez. Wow, this is going to be a fun project. I mean, I was excited about it to begin with, but such a radical difference. It's going to be freaking amazing. Okay, so yeah, this is a... Uh, this looks like a brand new barrel inside, so we're good. <clears throat> so there you go. Um, yeah, that, that spare, that's the worst barrel. I'm glad I got this documented and recorded because, geez. Cool. All right. Um, going to change up set. I'm going to change the setup here. <clears throat> get uh, get up, uh, get all up in the lathe action. And uh, we'll show you drilling out the, drilling out the bore of this horribly shot out, worn out, pitted to death. Like I said, it's like this thing has been underwater. The outside looks good. It's got patina, it's like what you would expect for a hundred some year old barrel, but whoa. I mean, even looking at it, you know, now that I know what I'm looking for, I can kind of see that, but it still, I mean, it does not look that bad like this. The naked eye. And granted, this is magnified, but still, geez, man. So, wow.
Okay, that's fine. <clears throat> All right. Pretty straightforward process. It's just a different drill. <laughs> you know. So, I already got my drill chuck and tail stock set up. Uh, <laughs> this is crazy. No time like the present. Let's just get a good healthy squirt of oil going on. that up and here we go oh yeah now there's it's wobbling like that because it's not in the bore yet but it is lifting chips that's good that's good that's good the chips are not blue I think we're in the bore now Okay, let's stop there and check it. Yep. Yep, I think I'm in the bore now. That hole just got a hell of a lot bigger. So there ain't no turning back now. There ain't no turning back now. Not that this barrel is even remotely freaking... Wow. I'm still just amazed how bad that was. How bad that boar was. Holy cow. <clears throat> uh, yeah. That's looking good. I don't care about surface finish. Actually, the rougher the better. But yeah, there we go. We're about oh, a half inch into the chamber. And the boar's just behind that. Dark. Darkness. Okay, so, um, yeah, all we're going to do is just com uh, commence to the drilling. This freaking monster. I've used a lot bigger diameter drills, but nothing ever this long. So, yeah, I'm kind of excited. This ought to be, this ought to be fun. Uh, 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 uh. Oh yeah, I see it wobbling a little bit here, but it's it's gonna happen. As long as you don't poke out the side, <laughs> hey, that would suck. Okay, I think it's, yeah, it's still kind of, you know, that bore is, it's a 25 cal, which would be 0.250 nominally. And I, by the looks of it, I bet that that bore is probably 0.26 or something. Yeah, whatever, it doesn't matter. Does not matter. And you know, I've seen this process done with a hand drill. Like, there's even a video on, on here on YouTube somewhere. The dude literally puts the barrel in a vice, a bench vice, and takes a hand drill. And it's like, it's not, it's not even cutting anything, it's funny. So a lathe is uh, the preferable way to go on this. All right, I'm about the end of my travel on the tailstock. Let's reset this stuff. Just check it again real quick visually. Oh yeah, making good progress here. And the drill is warm, not hot. So that's a good sign too. All right, let's keep going. 
So far, so good. Let me just check. Yeah, looks like we're still right in the center. <laughs> you know, the, the hole's not going this way or that way or something. Uh, that would be bad. Mm -hmm. It's just incredible. The only thing that's cutting on this drill bit is the very, very end of it. You know? Okay, our chip evacuation is getting a little bit not the best. Oh yeah, it's time to clean. All right. So yeah, just like any drilling operation, the deeper you go, the less chip evacuation you get, so you gotta kind of clean out. But uh, still, still hot, or not hot, but not uh, burning up. <clears throat> Probably increase my feed rate too. Eh, I don't know. No, it's a race. Okay. Clean that out. Go back in. Machine tools, man never ceases to just fascinate me. So how many of y'all have uh, old Winchesters? Uh, 92s, 94s? Leave it in the comments. If you got access to a borescope, you might want to look in there. <laughs> yes, this is a shameless plug. I am gunsmith for hire. I love work. So uh, I can do this for you. As long as they keep making barrel liners, at least. The lost art of relining a barrel. Okay, it's time to choke up my tailstock quill again and hey let's take a look have a look see here have a look see Ooh. that drill's getting a little warm let's uh chill that off a little bit so i don't smash my face into it oh look at that Whew, that's a deep hole but we're still in the center, <laughs> so that's good. That's good, and the barrel's cool. Those of you who don't know anything about machining, heat is the enemy. Heat. Dolls, cutters, and it can tend to make, if it gets really bad, it can make the steel hard, which dulls the cutters even worse. So all I did there, I got a quench tank on the right of my side, and it's cold now. <clears throat> so, uh, back in we go. But I mean, the old Winchester lever actions are just fun rifles. They're just, they're just a lot of fun. And uh, this kind of work here just brings it back to factory fresh, basically. Especially with a, a blue, like you re-blue the thing. My word. I did kind of wish my customer wanted this reboard, but oh well. He might change his mind later on. I told him that it can always be done later. I'm going to charge him more for it, because I had to take it all back apart again. But <laughs> It's like pulling a sword out of a sheath. <laughs> So, 
As you can see, we've got the muzzle end now installed in the four jaw chuck. Centered it the same way. Uh, and we're just drilling through. I'm actually using the carriage as a stop for the, the tail stock. So I'm not, I'm not doing what I was laughing about earlier. I'm not slamming the drill into the uncut portion of the hole. It's actually hitting the tail stock. I bet we're almost there. <clears throat> I think, I think this will be it right here. So again, that's hitting the, the carriage, not, not inside the hole. Come on, man. Break on through to the other. There it goes. Woo! <laughs> Talk about cutting that close. Okay, I think we got a hole thrown out. I think we're through. Yes! Wow. Bye bye, old rifling. Um. So yeah, that's all there is to that. Uh, I'm gonna take it out of the truck and uh, get it back on the bench. See what we got. So we'll reconfigure here and be right back. Before I get it out, <clears throat> just thought that'd be interesting for the nerds among us. That's all chips from the barrel. And plus, not including everything that fell down below. So all that just came out of the bore. <laughs> like, hundred-some-year-old steel. Isn't that just amazing? Just amazing. This has existed on this planet for over a hundred years. It gets cut out. And, you know, it's a little ragged looking obviously but i bet you the boar looks real nice now <laughs> but uh let's see that there. there's our through hole so yeah like i said i just want to show that real quick that's kind of interesting um uh, probably can't see in there very good but it's actually a very nice clean hole <clears throat> for going in uh you know, both directions. So yeah, um, let's do a little uh, test fit here. I still gotta degrease everything, so it doesn't really even matter. I just wanna see how this fits, if it, hopefully it fits. Not a lot of clearance, but it, so we're all the way through there. Can you see that? Can you see that? Not really. There we go. Now you can see. So, yeah, a little, little over a half inch sticking out on each side. That's that's really good. Um, so I got to degrease everything really good. Um, the inside of the bore is roughed up from the drilling operation. I'll probably bead blast the, out, the outside of this liner because for some reason they blowed it. I'm not sure why the heck they would have done that. But I want to make sure, or I'll just take some sandpaper. I, I don't know yet, but uh, yeah, I might just, I don't know. One way or another, I'm going to get this all down to just bare steel. Um, I may actually cut some very light grooves in it um, just to give that, just like bedding um, and sleeving and, and everything else. You want to give that glue, essentially, something to stick to. If I were to just put this in, install this like this, the high chance that's not going to really permanently bond as well as it, it should. And we certainly don't want this flying out later on down the road. <clears throat> now with uh, epoxy spread all over this and lathered up, uh, probably going to be a little more difficult. Um, I'm going to have to remember to plug that up. We don't want the epoxy getting inside. 
Let's see what the transition looks like here. Okay, good. I was hoping there'd be no like giant weird gaps or anything going on here. Let's see. So once this is machined flush to this uh, existing muzzle, um, I'll probably machine it, give it a bit of a recessed crown um, while I'm at it, just to do that. But uh, was that, what I was saying was I reckon that will uh, be nearly seamless once the epoxy's in there and then it's machined. I'm sure you'll still see a bit of a transition, but that's what I'm talking about, the transition there. That will be, come on, focus. That will be machined kind of like that. Um, but I'm going to, I'm going to just give it a fresh, just the whole thing, skim pass until that's all cleaned up. Uh, but that'll be way, way later. We got to get this, uh, degreased and, uh, installed.